Hello friends and aspiring ballerinas out there. My name is Kirsten and if you have been watching for a while, first off I don't need to introduce myself, hello old friends, but also you know that I never dodge around the hard subjects. I will talk about almost anything. In fact, I quite enjoy it. If it is more enriching, enriching and enlightening to you guys out there, if it supports you in your journey, I'm here to talk about it. So today I am inspired by all the direct messages I've been getting on Instagram over the like two years I've been on Instagram um, about, I don't have a 180 degree turnout, but I'm kind of close. Can I be a dancer? I have my splits, but not my over splits. Can I be a dancer? I can do two pirouettes, but not three consistently. Can I be a dancer? All these things that demonstrate this common fixation on external factors and being the cornerstone to one's success in a dance career. I want to debunk that, put each of the external qualities in their place, and then also present you with a list of qualities that truly anyone with any body, any body specifically, can possess and enhance in order to be more successful, a more well-rounded artist, a professional dancer, um, and a happier, healthier, more joyous human being. So overall, not only is this message going to be very practical for each of you and reassuring, it's also going to be more inclusive. I'm not here to contribute to um, you know, getting everyone's hopes up unnecessarily, but I also think that common messages out there in media make a professional career in dance seem very exclusive and it prevents people from even trying. So I'm all about a balance. You know, you will hopefully know in your heart what is right for you and everyone, if it's on your heart to pursue a career in professional dance, do it, see it through, make it as far as you will and know that you can always move on to something else or redefine your relationship with dance. Um, but I do want to just say that there's really hope for a lot more people with a lot different uh, of different body types than you think. So I'm just going to start out by stating my agenda for this. I'm going to state the takeaway that I want each of you to have by the end of this video. I really want you to know that each of these external factors I've gone through and will continue to break down are important in laying a foundation for creating your success as a dancer and making you a strong artist. They are not, however, the key factor in getting a position. Each one of these factors are a small part of a bigger picture and I want you to know that perfection in each of these areas is not the significant thing or the number one factor that gets you a contract. There's a lot more that goes on top of the qualities that your body possesses, okay? And I will get into those things, but just know that those things lay a foundation. But obsessing over attaining perfection in each one of these areas and making sure you are perfect in all of them is definitely not the point. That's not what gets you the contract. It definitely might help. In fact, a lot of the prima ballerinas of the world have all of these things, but just getting an entry level position and having a career that makes you happy does not require that you have all of them. So I'm just getting that out of the way. And I'm also going to just give a disclaimer that this is coming from my opinion, my experience and what I've seen as a dancer in the United States of America. There are different standards in different countries, especially those who still stick to the Russian standard and style of ballet. That's a different, totally different um, environment, different expectation, but um, at least in America, this is um, mostly true. So now I'm just gonna go down the laundry list of different qualities that dancers commonly, especially in their training phase, are fixated on, and I'm going to tell you from my opinion, their place in creating your success as a dancer. So first, feet. It is my belief that you just need to be able to get on your point shoe. You need to not be hinged backwards, but be able to get on your box comfortably enough to gain significant strength. You need to have at least um, alignment in your ankle, as in you don't sickle on point so much. Um, 
So that point work is also safe for you. From there, I mean, I just wanna say it's shocking that dancers in their teenage years can feel so held back by their feet, not having amazing arches, but it's crazy the amount of improvement you can see over the years of gaining strength and muscularity. Um, and beautiful leg definition that maybe takes an okay line um, and after years of training you suddenly have a really nice line to your leg. If you in particular feel like you don't have good arches or really nice feet, I would say no matter who you are, focus on articulation. Focus just obsessively over using your toes, having immaculate footwork, um, I know Amy Foti from Houston Ballet. She used to be a principal with Houston Ballet. She actually would say this herself. She never had good feet. And so from her teenage years and her training, she just sought to have the best footwork, not the best feet. She knew that she couldn't change her bone structure, but she really worked with um, how well she was using her feet. And actually, she kind of made her name for herself in having beautiful footwork to the point where people didn't really care that much what her feet looked like. Next, I'll talk about flexibility. So, I would say you definitely need to have your splits. Um, middle splits, no. Not everyone's hips are created to do the middle splits, all right? Uh, you just need to be able to rotate your legs. And at least, I would say, uh, to the front, you need to have your leg um, almost a head height. I think that's a decent standard to have. Maybe it's, I don't know, 120, 130 degrees. To the side, you need to be able to get it to head height. Maybe not every time, you don't have to have crazy extensions, but I'm saying these standards just because that is typically what allows you to blend in with a core, which is where you're gonna start if you get a professional contract. And I'll also talk more about the point of flexibility and how to use it to your advantage, even if you are not crazy flexible. But um, first I'll mention arabesque. For arabesque, you need to be able to get it to 90 or a little higher. I'd say just a little bit higher, at least you need to be able to hold it in a nice square arabesque without like a super affected line. There are plenty of dancers out there that don't have crazy good arabesques, okay? You just need to be strong and be able to hold it in a position where your upper body looks free, you don't look tense, you can still be artistic and um, still exhibit pretty good placement, but know your leg doesn't have to be over your head. The point of being flexible is mostly in order to help you look more free in your dancing. And also that's something you could just work on mentally and in your movement quality. So I'll tell you that in my journey as a dancer, I was decently flexible, but I would still get comments from instructors or my director about, um, he, he at first recommended that I gain more flexibility. And so I worked on that, but then I realized that I just was, um, moving in a way that was uh, kind of stiff. So I would raise my leg in ex an extension and instead of continuing the movement and letting it stretch up a little bit more, which was mostly a strength thing, and then smoothly transitioning into the next, I would kind of hold it and like stiffen up a little bit and it looked like I was limited in my movement. So it looked like I just wasn't flexible enough even though my leg was pretty much the same, same height as everyone else. And so I just started to work through that movement quality and work to where I could have that smoothness to my arabesque and look as if it could keep going higher if I had more time rather than just getting there and holding it, making sure I held it. Um, so yeah, I just worked through my stiffness and I stopped getting those comments. <laughs> so I'd say that's really the point of flexibility and that's the point of truly all of these points I'll go through. You need to have a foundation of technique and strength and capability in order to be free as an artist. If your body holds you back from looking and feeling free and expressive, then you need work in these foundational areas. But these are not the things that the audience is necessarily going to care so much about. In fact, you can have the total package and be the most boring non-artist ever, in which case you will not hold down a contract very long and it's just boring to watch. So you need to have heart and soul behind your dancing and I'll get more to that later, but just wanted to mention the point of the foundation here and what you're really going for. 
Now I'll talk about thinness and overall physique. This one's challenging to talk about. Um, yes, there is a standard of fitness in the ballet industry. I wish it weren't so. Yes, there are issues with the culture. I also wish it weren't so. I definitely plan on talking about this more in the future. But as far as the standard, it's really hard to say because everyone's body is different. Every company is different. No, you don't necessarily have to be rail thin. Um, you do need to be really fit and toned for your body. So you need to be able to see um, muscle definition for sure, at this day and age, that's what's really po a popular aesthetic, at least in American dance. You need to have enough um, leanness to be able to see your muscles and to create long, beautiful lines. You need to look well, you need to look strong, you need to be strong. Honestly, it's obvious when dancers don't eat. You look weak, it's concerning, you don't need to have bones popping out of everywhere. In fact, please don't go for that. It's now please, by me saying this, please don't look at Point Magazine or you know a lot of pub publications or Instagram out there, oh my gosh, and look at the thinnest dancers or the most famous dancers and feel like you have to look like them. No, you definitely don't. But um, again, this is hard to talk about because it's individual for each body. I wanna be clear and I'm not saying don't have any fat on your body. Please have fat on your body. Everyone should. It is healthy. It is crucial for survival as a human being. You just need to be fit and healthy for you. It's kind of clear when someone is not at their optimum level. You don't have to be the thinnest possible for you, but you need to find the intersection of muscle tone, low body fat percentage, not being so bony, but like seeing your natural shape, and clearly having a strength and a vitality to you. It's clear when a dancer does not eat enough. It is clear, I am not promoting that. You should be able to live in a way where you are not hungry all the time, you are not restricted, you have clear cognitive ability, your hormones are functioning. In fact, I am a super huge advocate for getting your blood tested, looking at your hormone levels. You should be able to function. That is absolutely top priority. If you feel like you are starving yourself, you are fixated on what you eat all the time, um, you're always worried about not being thin enough, that is not where you should be mentally. It happens to the best of us, but you need to be at the intersection of your best fitness, in good health, all the hormones and everything, body processes are functioning, um, and just being fit, healthy, strong, having muscular tone. That is what's important. And I also want to say that if you are at a studio or a company where they do not, the authorities do not support your healthy weight, and if you feel like you are being asked to take unhealthy measures to attain a thinner body, please get out of there. It is not going to get better. That is a red flag. I have zero tolerance in my mind and in my life for people who make young dancers or someone of any age feel bad about their body. If someone is shaming you for it and not presenting um, maybe a kind, constructive, helpful, objective way um, and helping you to get more healthy, um, and I do mean legitimately healthy, a lot of teachers or just directors say healthy, you need to be healthier. They don't mean healthy, they mean skinnier. If someone is pushing you towards unhealthy measures for a thin body, get the heck out of there. It is not worth it. It is them, it is not you. Just remember that, it's them, it's not you. Whew, okay, that got a little heated. I'll talk about turnout now. A subject I also get very passionate about, having um, eight injections in my knee and a surgery based off of over rotation and encouragement to turn out beyond my natural limits. Um, but anyway, that's that's just my story, that's, that's my beef. Um, but how much turnout do you need to be a professional? Let's answer that. So I will say, I don't know the exact degree 
that is necessary. You need to learn how to use your muscles to turn out your legs using strength and not just force against the floor, you know, like pushing your feet aside and forcing your joints into a position. Um, especially when you go on point, it's obvious when you're not able to sustain your turnout from your strength and your muscularity, you know, your rotators in your glutes, and then even the outer thigh muscles, inner thighs, hamstrings, like you can use technically all of them to kind of have that rotation in your legs. I'm going to refrain from talking about specifically how much you need to turn out your feet. I will just say, no, you do not need 180 degree turnout. In fact, very few professional dancers in the United States and in other countries, I will say, actually perform with 180 degrees of rotation. That is usually only done at bar for people who find that more important than their joint health, okay? You will see a lot of professional dancers not turning out all the way for bar and using their muscles. We only turn out as much as we can um, until the point where we are no longer using our strength to turn out, we're actually using the floor. You learn over time as you mature in your technique where that is for your body. You just need to focus on um, using your muscles properly to turn out, and I promise the shape of your legs will change. You will look more free as a dancer. You will gain strength. You will only get more beautiful, okay? Cranking your feet into a position only causes joint damage. It makes you more tense. It affects your posture. It affects everything and not in a positive way. Seriously, 180 degree turnout is not worth all that. Okay, maybe I'll take a shot at using an, a, a degree. So let's say if one foot makes, an, uh, we'll say that's a 90 degree angle, um, I think using your natural rotation, you should be able to at least turn out 60 degrees, okay? In the center, you know, you'll notice that when you're on one leg, it might just be 45 degrees of turnout, that's fine. But at the bar, I should say, uh, my opinion is what I've seen, a lot of dancers will be between the 60 degree and almost 180 range. Very few at bar are actually going for 180 unless they have like a crazy amount of natural turnout. Before I move on to the next part of this video where I mention um, qualities that you can enhance in yourself and work on to increase your chances of being a professional, um, I just wanna say that Going back to all the qualities I just mentioned that are external, relating to these in like an obsessive, unhealthy way is really dangerous. Truly, whatever is going on in your head and whatever you're obsessing over as a dancer really projects. If you just are obsessed with hitting these benchmarks of how much your feet rotate, how many pirouettes you can do, how much your, uh, like what the arch of your foot looks like, if you are so obsessed with these things that honestly have more to do with how you were born than what kind of a dancer you are, it really projects, it shows that sort of obsession and worry and the am I good enough, am I good enough um, in comparison thing, it reads and it really debilitates you as an artist and as a dancer. And ultimately, a lot of these things have to do with your things like your bone structure. You can't change that. And obsessing over something that has a limit, it has like a wall you're gonna hit again and again, is something that just, it brings destruction in your mind and in your body. So it's really important to hold these things loosely, work on them, know they're important, know that there is a limit to how much you can improve, but you can also push them a little bit. You can work on it. You can see an improvement in your lines. So you know, your body will mature and become more strong and moldable over time. What it becomes is a reflection of what you focus on. So you can improve in these areas, totally. You can become more flexible. You can get more turnout by increasing your strength. You can improve your arch by doing therapy and exercises or stretching your feet all the time, but will you become something that you're totally not? No. So let's move on to the next part of the, the video. And um, I just want this to be an encouragement to examine your own mindset, examine what you're fixated on and choose again if appropriate. So I just wanna introduce the concept of the X factor as I like to call it, and I'm actually thinking I might do a whole video on this X factor. But what I'll mention that I believe it is, 
I wrote it down, so I'll read it. A magnetic performance quality or enhanced positive trait in yourself that defines you as a beautiful individual artist. It's like this unspoken like eminence of beauty. It makes you magnetic to watch. And it's like a, a trait or an energy that you emanate that attracts others that can't really be put into words that easily. It's like a combination of so many different factors, but ultimately I like to just see it as someone's essence that's so contagious and that makes someone so beautiful to watch in a way that if someone possesses this X factor, I find myself watching them and forgetting about their body, forgetting about the little technical benchmarks that I like to watch for in a performance. Instead of looking at their arabesque and wondering how many pirouettes they did or whatever, I find myself getting so lost in the impression of their art and feeling their beauty almost like transfer to me and my mind and inspire me rather than fixating on the little things that they're doing. I almost forget about that. That's the power of the X factor. So let's talk about some traits that contribute to you having your own X factor. First, being confident and loving what you do. The more you have this inward experience of joy and passion and love for what you're doing, no matter what you're performing, it could even be a sad ballet. That inward experience you're having is what someone else who's watching you is feeling too. If you're really in your head and you're just obsessing over the little things, you can probably notice this in other dancers. When someone is in their head, they withdraw. There's just something in their eyes that says they're not really there. And then that's when your brain is left to focus on the technical benchmarkers. Instead of that transference of passion that can happen when someone is just completely vulnerably sharing their art and their love for what they're doing. Also, when someone is confident, that happens when someone is not afraid as an artist to be exactly who they are, exactly where they are um, as, in their journey as a technician, in their capabilities, all these things. They're just comfortable in showing it no matter what it looks like so that they can then share that feeling that they're getting from their, their dancing. Being confident also comes from not being obsessed about hiding your flaws. The more you learn to work on your weaknesses, I don't like to call them flaws. You know, if something could be better, work on it. Don't obsess over it and identify with it like it's this part of you that you hate so much and you have to hide it. Being confident comes from just putting yourself out there and not being afraid of correction, not being afraid of what people might think and just accepting exactly where you are right now. This is where doing mindset work is really important, people. Also, speaking of mindset, being present and being aware is something that is very attractive as a quality in a dancer. Teachers, directors, whoever love this. It is so pleasant to work with someone who's very clearly engaged in the classroom or in the rehearsal. They're not in their head thinking all about themselves. They're focused, but they're not fixated on what's going on with them. Being aware and present looks like being able to instantly um, notice when the rehearsal director is about to say something. When they stop the music, you are instantly ready to receive whatever they're gonna say. It means you're aware of everything that's going on around you. You're not so trapped in your own world that you can't see that someone over here is kind of moving a little bit slowly. They might get out of line and so you need to adjust and get right behind them. In a profession where so many dancers are completely stuck in their own head and in their own ego, it is so attractive to just be present aware, confident, and loving what you do. That does so much. Now, speaking more on the technical side, which I'm sure a lot of you can identify with, is that you need to be consistent. You need to be reliable and consistent. This does come from having a good foundation of technique and also a good mindset where you're not constantly so worried about screwing up that you're screwing up, you know? You need to be able to consistently with a level head deliver a similar performance 
every rehearsal, every time you get on stage, every class. It doesn't mean you can't have an off day, but you need to generally first believe in yourself and allow others to believe in you by just coming at your work with a consistent, methodical approach. Again, not super in the ego, not really affected by emotions. You are just there, you're doing your job. Um, you know how to you know, navigate an off day when you feel off your balance or you don't have a good pair of point shoes. You know how to make minor adjustments to deliver a similar, similar quality of performance every single day. That is seriously what will get one dancer who might not have great feet or turn out a contract over someone who has the total package. If Cindy over here with the total package can't get her stuff together on a daily basis or she's like has a day every week where she's a hot mess, um, someone is going to go for the person who's more consistent because that's just a lot nicer to work with. Another quality that is really awesome and will totally get you brownie points is if you can learn quickly, but not only absorb information quickly and do something with it, it is also amazing to see a dancer in a company rehearsal who can be a contributor, who can kind of understand what the director is trying to say or the choreographer and like fill in the gaps, not be obnoxious and like say what they think all the time, but to see a dancer who's like, okay, I'm so on the same page with you that I kind of know what you're going to do next, or I know what you mean. Um, kind of someone who fills in the gaps or thinks ahead. That is just an amazing quality in a dancer that will so get you chosen again and again. Directors love that. Next, artistry. You need to convey that inward experience I was talking about earlier. You need to be able to tell a story. You need to be authentic, genuine, um, creating your own art. Like really start to take your classes and pose yourself the question of how can I make this an art? This is not just an exercise. This is an art I'm creating. How do I want to create it? What do I have to say through my dancing? Things like that. So artistry is incredibly important. Next, musicality. You need to have a really good understanding of music. You need to be um, dynamic in your dancing and be able to emulate the, yeah, the dynamics in the music through your dancing. I don't think there's a whole lot I have to say about that, but the more musical you are, seriously, the more success you will have. <laughs> also, strength and clarity and technique. Obviously, it's really important to have strong technique. What I mean by that is you are able to do most anything that is thrown at you. You have a certain level of strength that allows you to do a difficult turn sequence um, or jump well. You know, you just need to have the foundation of being able to do everything and do it to a decent technical standard where there's no um, kind of weakness in your technique that overrides the amount of artistry you could deliver. Just no matter what, basically the point is to be able to do everything and do it to a level where you are not distracting and nothing, like I said, outweighs the amount of artistry you're able to portray. Next is good attitude. You have to have a good attitude and not be self-absorbed. Now, I want to make a little distinction on not being self-absorbed. Being self-absorbed looks uh, many different ways, okay? It's not just being a diva and having to have your way and kind of throwing a fit when you don't like things. It's also, you're self-absorbed if you are so obsessed about your insecurities and just so consumed by them that you literally can't think out of outside of yourself. Oh, Constantine joined me for this next point. Uh, so also being open, being willing to do and try anything and to just jump into anything um, is so important. And also showing initiative, like being the girl who steps in as an understudy who wasn't even asked to be an understudy in core work just because you were there learning the choreography and you're like, hey, so-and-so is at their doctor's appointment. I can go in. That kind of attitude is wonderful. One of my last points is that you need to know your strengths as a, an artist and a technician and play them up. 
don't just focus on the things that you feel you need to improve or flaws you need to hide. Focus on the things you're good at and seriously get so good at them that people are like, wow, her turns are awesome or wow, her port de bras is just immaculate. Wow, her musicality is so perfect. Things like that. Play it up, know your strengths. So just to give you a few takeaways and finish this off. Maturity is important, reliability, confidence, having a good fa technical foundation enough to where you are free to be artistic. And like I said, having technique that doesn't distract from your artistry, that's what you need. Other than that, be smart, be open, be persistent, keep trying, and be easy to work with. That gets you far. Okay, I've talked for a while. I really hope that this has been enlightening and hopefully encouraging to a lot of you. Share it with your dancer friends. I'm sure everyone has a little something they could get out of it or that they haven't considered before. But thank you if you made it to the end. I will see you very soon. Make sure to subscribe so you stick around for my other videos. And also feel free to leave me topic suggestions. I love hearing from you. So have a great day. Happy dancing, you guys. Bye.